Oh, Shabbat Shalom. What a beautiful day it is, isn't it? Wow, I love having the windows open and the fans going. And for those who are watching us online, we miss you. I hope you can join us in the near future. Amen. You know, sometimes we need to take a step back to move ahead two steps. A step back to move two steps forward. For this morning's drosh, we begin, I begin, by taking a step back to the beginning of last week's parsha, Kiddushim. Translated means a holy people. Do you say Kiddushim? Good. That's a, that didn't sound very loud. Kiddushim. There you go. That's a holy people. Where God says to Moshe, speak to the entire community of Israel and tell them, you people are to be holy because I, Adonai your God, am holy. We can only be holy people. We can only be Kiddushim as Adonai is holy if we do it together and in unity. I said to you many, many times that God sees us less as individuals, but more in the context as a community, as a body. It's in the last chapter of this week's Parashat Imor, which translated from Hebrew means speak, that Adonai continues to teach us about the importance of holiness, about the, whole, about the significance of of this lesson from last week, that was part of last week's Parsha, the idea of holiness, of Kiddushim, being a holy people. So from this morning's portion that Yochanan read for us, Hashem said to Moshe, order the people of Israel to bring you pure oil from crushed olives for the light, to keep the lamps burning always. See, the people of Israel were responsible for for coming together. It was a mitzvot. They, regardless of what was going on in their personal lives or going on in their hearts or going on around them, they had some things that they had to do as a community, as a people. They had to come together. They were responsible by God to come together and coordinate with each other to gather enough olives so that the menorah or the ner tamid, the eternal light, could be continually lit to shine its light all throughout the year. So, God's people are not only called to be Kiddushim, holy together, but they were also called to provide what was necessary to be a light together. Now, Adonai would have caused, he could have done it. I mean, look, does he really need us? No. He could have kept the light burning on his own. He didn't need us. He could do it forever and ever. But he chose us. He chose us to make his light shine brightly through the combined efforts of the community, of the kehilat, the assembly. And as a congregation, Adonai uses us. We're his vehicle to shine his light. But we must keep our eyes on the goal, in the mission given to us, or our light will diminish. And make no mistake, brothers and sisters, darkness will fill the void. For darkness is nothing more than what? An absence of light. When there's an absence of holy kiddushim, then that void is filled with darkness. And you see it in our world today, You see it in particular in our own country. And many of the prophets are speaking out about that. People like Jonathan Kahn, he's picking up on it. He's seeing it. Those who are aware of what's going on in the spirit. Adonai, God wants the light of our congregation to grow and grow and be more and more noticeable and influential to those here in Northeast Ohio and beyond. This is a very unique 
congregation. And I don't say that pridefully. I say it because it is a reality. Many of you, bless your hearts, you're here. There's some things about the congregation you like and you continue to attend. Praise the Lord. But it's so much more than, than that. And so many of you are one foot into the church or one foot maybe here and, and he kind of fulfills a sort of spiritual need for you, like it fills a spiritual void for you. But what you don't realize is this congregation is so much more. Again, from our Ketave HaShalchim portion, our Master Yeshua said, as people of his way, we are what? We are light for the world. We are light for the world. And since the inception of this congregation 25 years ago, we have been given a light. And we have been diligent. We've been diligent to not allow it to be covered no matter how many attempts and efforts have gone forth to try to silence the voices and cover the light. During this time, the site has worked together to bring the oil that Adonai has given us so that we could fuel his light, just as B'nai Israel were commanded to do as well. The mitzvah, to do this is called in Hebrew a chakat olam. It's an eternal statute, something we are commanded to always seek to fulfill. Are there a lot of ner tamids in the churches you've gone to? Are there eternal lights that are continually burning there? No. And yet this word says perpetual ordinance. So again, I'm emphasizing the uniqueness of this congregation over and against the backdrop of modern Christianity. We are not permitted, scripturally, to give this endeavor up, ever, even though crushing olives and acquiring the necessary oil, especially for a congregation like us that's so distinct and unique, can often be a very tiresome task. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I know. And I know the challenges and attacks this congregation have repeatedly experienced have resulted in many growing weary and returning to the sanctuary of what they had known before. Our Haftarah portion identifies what God's light is. And what is that? The Torah, the Torah. So affirming this truth, when you read from Matthew Yahu or Matthew 5, 16 to 19, after our Rabbi Yeshua challenging us to let our light shine before people so that they may see the good things that you do and praise your Father in heaven, he then states perhaps the most misread and interpreted truth in Scripture. Specifically, the New Testament or the Ketavei HaShachim. And here it is. Don't think that I've come to abolish the Torah. Don't think I've done that. It's interesting he says that right in the beginning of his ministry. Very first, one of the first things that comes out of his mouth. Because he didn't want to be misunderstood, misread, misinterpreted. So he, he addressed it point blank. Don't think that, that what I'm teaching or doing here is at odds with the Torah, that I'm replacing the Torah, that I'm, nailing, I'm going to nail it to the tree <laughs> or allow it to be nailed to the tree because he wouldn't have done it. But don't think I've come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to complete. Yes, indeed, I tell you that, not, that until heaven and earth pass away, not so much as a yod or a stroke will pass from the Torah. How can you misread that? How can you misinterpret that? How can you be confused by that? Not until everything that must happen has happened. So whoever disobeys the least of these mitzvot or commands and teaches others to do so, teaches others to do so, will be called what? least in the kingdom of heaven. 
least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys them and so teaches will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So you can have your kingdom now, or you can embrace the kingdom that is here and coming. Our mission and focus, brothers and sisters, here at the site is to repair the breach. We are called to repair. If you wonder what this is about, are we trying to be Jewish? No, no, we're not trying to be Jewish. No, not our goal. May look that way, but that's not the end game. What we're trying to do at the site is repair the breach between faith in Messiah Yeshua and his way for life, the Torah. That's our calling. That's what's happening here. The two are symbiotic. You cannot have one without the other. The word or Torah is what? It's all about Yeshua from front to back. And Yeshua is what? The word. They are symbiotic. For the Jew, we're called to enlighten them about the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua. And for the rest of the nations, we're called to illuminate the way of Torah. That's the breach. And we're called to repair that breach. This is the mission of our congregation, to repair that breach between Torah and Messiah. Is that why you're here? If that is not your mission and that we are not on the same page, I want you to hear the words of Rabbi Messiah Yeshua where he clearly tells us what our mission should be. He spells it out for you. I never understand where the confusion lies. I really don't. Matthew Yahu, again, chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, he proclaims to us, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, says Yeshua. Therefore, go and what? Make people from all nations into Talmudim, disciples, immersing them into the reality of the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. There's not a lot of wiggle room there. It's clear. And so our mission is actually the great commission given to us by Yeshua the Messiah. And that is why I'm so serious about seeing it fulfilled as it should be for you as God's Kiddushim, his holy set-apart people for God. And again, to reiterate, this mission is that you are either being actively discipled or that if you are a seasoned Talmud or disciple within the Messianic community that has been actively engaged in discipleship and living a life of Torah already and following the Jewish Messiah, that you yourself are then helping us in the discipleship process with those who are called to be Talmudim or disciples. So ask yourself, have you been fulfilling the Great Commission? How's that going for you? Have you been fulfilling the Great Commission to disciple or to receive discipleship given to you by your Master Yeshua lately? And if so, God bless you. That's great. We should evaluate ourselves and what we're doing. If you are doing that, that is great. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good mitzvah. But if not, then we need to ask ourselves what has been more important that has caused the command of Yeshua to be of secondary importance in your life. What is it in your life that's so much more important than that mitzvah from the master? And what do you think Yeshua would say about it as well? And even more important, what has Yeshua already said about it? <laughs> Are you working to help us further that mission either through being a disciple or by discipling or both? Or are you disregarding the mission in ways that are diminishing the light that we have been commanded to shine? Brothers and sisters, 
we are a small, humble group. I don't mean to state the obvious. But if you step back and you look about, you look at the oil that's in the seats, we are blessed in numerous ways. We are blessed, for example, with people like Mike and Kelly who disciple with their Thursday Torah club. They're doing it. Every Thursday, they have people in their home and they are discipling them in the word of God. We are blessed with more and more of you, like Shelly today, stepping up to lead our bi-weekly Beit Midrash, our Torah studies, like Heidi has, and others, Coach Ron. We are blessed with Heidi Moika, helping us to enhance our worship experience with our weekly Davidic dance classes. She's committed and devoted and does an amazing job. And if you were to go to any other congregation, you might be kind of impressed with what you know Heidi brings to the table in, in the area of worship and praise. And there's several of you that have been to other congregations. We're blessed as Akeen Carlton. Mike Carlton reaches into our community all the time, especially during this time of year, the reset mission along with monthly prayers from the community prayer groups that come here to the, to the site and pray, 5 in the morning, 5.30 in the morning. Lord knows, I wish I could be here. I just can't do it. Well, bless those souls that are here. And under Michael's leadership, that's happening. That's discipling. It's only together seeking the same mission in an ordered way that we can be effective light as we bring our talents together according to God's instructions to make a difference in our world. I mean, that's going to make a difference. Our world needs us. See, for our God is a God of order. We had that the second Seder the other night. Seder literally means order. God is a God of order. Rabbi Shaul expressed this in his first letter to Corinth, chapter 14, verse 33, for God is not a God of confusion, no, but shalom, as in all the communities of the Kiddushim, the holy people. So as we do this more and more, we will more and more of a light to the world around us, and we will be more and more effective in fulfilling Adonai's Torah, at spreading his kingdom in the hearts and minds of people, not only just in the neighborhood, but in Northeast Ohio and beyond, just as our master Yeshua has exhorted us to do. Adonai is calling us out. He's calling us out. Those who have ears to hear, let them shema, let them hear. Whether or not we feel like we've really contributed to the bringing of the oil to enable the light to shine in our community and area, I just want to encourage you all that whether you have taught Bible studies or Torah to our community or whether you have given of your matzer, your tithes, and, and your tzedakah, your offerings to enable God and I's work through the star in the east, those who are faithful in their giving, whether you have helped clean or maintain the synagogue or property, whether you've been a faithful prayer warrior or you have encouraged uh, someone or given a helping hand to someone in our congregation, or whether you have done anything ever to edify this community in any way, you have played a significant and important part or role in bringing the oil to fuel God's light as God's people were commanded to do. God bless you. Do not grow weary. Do not grow weary in these things, but be faithful in continuing in them and keep up the good mitzvah. It's taken our congregation joining hands together to be a light in our area for 25 years, which we'll be celebrating with all of you July 15th. 
a rabbinical commentator speaking about the menorah, he says the following. All of it, all of its parts are beaten from one piece of gold so that each one needs the other. So too, it is impossible for one person to be arrogant towards another. When there is unity, the menorah shines to the entire world. And sometimes we feel like our light is growing dim or even dark. We need to go to the Kohen Hagadol, the high priest, Yeshua, to light our lamp, just as the Kohen lit the Ner Tamid in the Beit HaMikdash, the holy temple. Reading from Tehillim or Psalms 1828 states, For you will light my lamp. Hashem, my God, will light up my darkness. Indeed, Yochanan or John, chapter 1, verses 4 to 5, says that the Messiah Yeshua, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness hasn't overcome it and never will. And that's why I made the point about canceling Yeshua, because our world is about canceling Yeshua. You could talk generically about God. You could generically talk about prayer. You could, you could talk about all these things, but they're powerless and meaningless apart from Yeshua. And that's so important for us to get our, our heads around that. No matter what you do in regards to your faith, if it is anything apart from Yeshua, then it's empty. It's powerless. It's all about Yeshua. And again, we read in John from chapter 8, verse 12, our Rabbi Yeshua teaches us, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light which gives life. And you know what a bright light looks like when you're in the midst of darkness. When a bright light shines in deep darkness, what does it do? It draws you to it. I was thinking to myself the other day, we, we had this monster bonfire at our house because a tree came down like this one here. So uh, uh, Phil cut it down and piled it on our big fire pit. Boy, we lit that puppy. It was a huge fire. But I'm standing there thinking, why do we do that? That's, just, again, how my mind works. What is it about us that in the dark night, suddenly when the fire is burning, we kind of gravitate towards it? Why do we do that? What is it about a bonfire or a, I hate even using that word because it actually comes from bone fire and it's kind of a pagan thing. But, uh, but anyway, a big fire. <laughs> what is it that draws us to that? It's because it, it's, it's in our spirit to be drawn to the light. To be drawn to the light. It draws us together into unity. And he has called us to... And, unity and to the unity that he sees in the future for his people. The first letter of John, chapter 1, verse 7, teaches us, but if we are walking in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the, and the blood of his son, Yeshua, purifies us from all sin. But the key of that is, of course, not diminishing the blood, but then we have fellowship with each other. So therefore, as we continue to read Yochanan Aleph, or 1 John, chapter 2 now, verse 8, we're taught, again, I write a new commandment to you which is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light already shines. The one claiming to be in the light and hating their brother or sister is in the darkness until now. The one loving their brother or sister rests in the light and no offense is in them, but the one hating their brother or sister is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where they're going because the darkness has blinded their eyes, blinded them. Brothers and sisters, if any of us are nursing offenses against each other, we diminish his light. We diminish his light and we allow darkness to blind our eyes because we have strayed off onto a path of darkness. And when this happens, we cut ourselves off from the source of light, and thus we are responsible for decreasing the light that we had when we were all together. And this unity 
I'm speaking of is a Torah mitzvah and is no less significant or important than eating a kosher diet or being here on Shabbat or celebrating a high holy day. We become liable to judgment when we disrupt the flow of oil to the menorah that Israel is commanded to bring. Now, on this note, the Rabbi Shaul exhorts us with the following again in his first letter to Corinth. Nevertheless, brothers, I call on you in the name of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah to agree, all of you, in what you say and not to let yourselves remain split into factions, but be restored to having a common mind and a common purpose. And through the Zephaniah Hanavi, the prophet Zephaniah, in chapter 3, verse 9 of his book, Adonai prophesied through him the following about all the nations of the earth. For then I will turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of Hashem to serve him with one covenant. You see, long ago, you might remember the Tower of Babel or Babel. Darkness and futile thinking fell upon the people of the earth in Torahlessness. They didn't observe the Torah. And it was the ultimate source and symbol of disunity and lawlessness upon the earth. But as believers in Messiah, we are told to come out of that way of life. And when we do, we contribute to the fall of spiritual Babel or Babel. Now, if we are contributing to darkness and confusion and are acting in lawless ways, such as spreading Lashon Hara, which is a modern vernacular gossip, speaking ill of people, if we are spreading Lashon Hara in our congregation against our brothers and sisters amongst other Torah transgressions, or have acted in ways that diminish the unity that Adonai wants for us, whether we admit it or not, we will be guilty of building spiritual Babylon in our midst. And I don't want to be responsible or accountable to that. Now, the only way we can reverse it is by recognizing what we have done and, of course, turn from such action and tear it down. Otherwise, we have provided a stronghold for the enemy to attack us from right in our midst. We built the tower for him to attack us, basically. Amen. Revelation chapter 18, verses 2 to 5. We read the following. He cried out in a strong voice, She has fallen. She has fallen. Bavel the great. She has become a home for demons, a prison for every unclean spirit, a prison for every unclean hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of God's fury caused by her whoring. Yes, the kings of the earth went whoring with her, and from her unrestrained love of luxury, the world's businessmen have grown rich. Then I heard another voice out of heaven say, My people, come out of her, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not be infected by her plagues. For her sins are a sticky mass piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. <laughs> you know, that's strong language there. When we read exhortations like the, the, the one by Shaul, for example, in 1 Corinthians, where he tells us to strive for unity as we read prophecies foretelling the future of the earth and the restoration of a pure language, and that we will all serve Adonai with one consent. It is done so in the spirit of the restoration of things. Brothers and sisters, when we walk in the light, as Yeshua walks in the light, when we love our brothers and sisters and are fellowshipping in unity with one another and not breaking off from one another, when we are working in unity with one another to bring the oil to light the lamp, then we are helping to fulfill prophecy and God's will. And as we do this more and more, our light will grow so bright in the midst of vast darkness that people's from far off, we'll see it will be drawn to the light. And this can only happen 
if we want it individually, but even more importantly, if we want it corporately. Do you want that to be your mission? Do you see that as your mission? Join hands, rhetorically, with me and other brothers and sisters in our congregation who are diligently trying to do that very thing, who are diligently trying to accomplish this mission. My wife and the leadership here, and many of you that are devoted and committed to this congregation, many of us, many of us came here or came to congregations like ours with our first love of loving God with all of our heart, soul, strength, loving each other, serving Messiah Yeshua, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. That was our motivation. That's our passion. That's our heart. We were zealous. We were zealous in those ways. We were excited to learn, right? We took classes like how you sewed, and we... And we went to Torah club classes and we went to Beit Midrashes and we, and we looked online and we were, we were just hungry, hungry to re- have revealed to us how all these centuries the body of Messiah has gone this way and why did it overlook this? And, and we had to know. We had to know these answers, these questions. What is this thing about Shabbat? Did we miss something here? Oh my gosh, how'd that happen? Or there, there's all these holidays. Why, why aren't we observing them? These are phone calls that I get. I don't know. I just, you know, I, 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 I'm just finding out maybe the Sabbath is Saturday. Well, welcome aboard because everybody else here felt the same way. They had that moment, that God moment. For many of us, when we first came, we thought, that this kind of congregation where the God of Israel and his Messiah Yeshua is lifted up and where his Torah is taught and lived is exactly what we were looking for and we were happy and we were passionate and zealous to be a part of what was going on here. But perhaps over time, after we become familiar with these things, perhaps taking them for granted, and after we have spent time with each other and have discovered each other's shortcomings, the rest of you, not me, but that would be one of my shortcomings. <laughs> but we discover each other's shortcomings and each other's flaws, idiosyncrasies, and perhaps after being sidetracked with petty issues, offenses, Worries. People are so so easily offended these days. Easily offended. Maybe after experiencing some of these things over time, our first love has kind of become diminished. And the first unity and zeal that you felt and enjoyed has diminished as well. But if any of this describes any of us, and if any of us has gotten sidetracked over time and taken our eyes off of Yeshua, well, God is calling us to return. He's calling us to teshuva, to return to him and back to our first love that we experienced and that we cherished. He is calling us back to the first love that made us so joyful and zealous to serve him and serve one another. Revelation again, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Hear these words. To the angel of the Messianic community in Ephesus, write. Here is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven gold menorahs. I know what you have been doing, how hard you have worked, how you have persevered, and how you can't stand wicked people. So you've tested those who call themselves emissaries but aren't. And you found them to be liars. And you are persevering and you have suffered for my sake without growing weary, but I have this against you. You have lost the love that you had at first. Therefore, remember where you were before you fell. 
and turn from this sin and do what you used to do before. Otherwise, I will come to you and remove your menorah from its place if you don't turn from your sin. So Leviticus of Vayikra, chapter 24, verse 2, again, we read, instructs God's people to lahalot ner tamid, to cause the light to burn continuously. If you go to any Jewish synagogue all over the world, anywhere, I don't care if it's Reform, Conservative, Orthodox, Reconstructionist, Neo-Orthodox, I mean, I can go down the list. Any of them, if you go in, of course, Messianic, you're going to see above the Ark, the Aron Kodesh, you're going to see the Ner Tamid, which means the eternal light or lamp. Every one of those. And it is a glowing lamp that represents a menorah that was to be kept continually lit, which represents the dwelling presence of Adonai and his word, his Torah. Ours, of course, is a little unique because I struggled with covering the Torah, as may you know. Many synagogues will put it behind a door or they have a curtain. I said, heck no. You know, it doesn't make any sense. That's a stupid thing to do. I don't ever want to cover up the word of God. So I keep the word of God illuminated at all times. That's the eternal light. And Yeshua is our eternal hope because Yeshua is the word. So synagogues can do what they want to do, but we're going to show the light of the world all the time. So in Luke 12, verse 48, Yeshua says, from him who has been given much, much will be demanded. And we have been blessed with much. Maybe you've overlooked it all. We have been blessed with much. Who's been in other Messianic congregations? Okay, you have? Okay. Do you realize how many of those do not have their own building? We have our own building. God has blessed us with a building you'll find that most Messianic congregations do not have their own building. They share churches, halls. We did it for years. We've been blessed with much. We have been given many olives to work with and many anointed, godly individuals. We have been given a great opportunity and responsibility. There is incredible potential here. Incredible potential. And I've been encouraged to see how many ways Amna has used our community to be a light over the past 25 years, in particular, these past five years that we've been here. And whether it's been through providing a place for new people to learn about a, what it is to live a Messianic Torah life, whether it's been through our various outreaches, whether it's been through our Holy Day celebrations or our concerts, our congregation has persevered as a consistent and constant light, just like that near to me. I'm challenging you to commit to being a light together for the years to come. And indeed, until the coming of Yeshua, our Messiah, long after I'm gone, I want this to continue to shine brightly. For if we continue to come together to be a light as we have been commanded, you have no idea what's yet to come. We haven't seen anything yet. If you think it's just about having a building, you are missing it. You're looking right here and not looking out here. This is just a stepping stone. Look how many people are sitting in the seats here. We're missing a lot of regulars. If everybody that came to this congregation on a semi-regular basis were here, we wouldn't have enough seats. I could show you. I can add them up. You know, I've... Uh, if you're willing and you exercise a godly faith in these matters... 
He can and will do greater things in all of us. So, wrapping this up, a for real conclusion. In order to keep the light shining in our Aron Kodesh radiating the truth <coughs> of Yeshua in his way, it behooves us to continually work together providing the spiritual and physical resources necessary to be Kiddushim or holy together, to be a light together. It isn't me. It isn't my wife who makes most of the food for our own egg. We very easily can sometimes ride along other people's provision and efforts. But sadly, a lot of us do that. Have you ever imagined if we all put forth the same effort? Isn't that what happens in sports teams? Sometimes there's a superstar, there's a LeBron, and everybody just kind of waits to see what LeBron is going to do, right? He's an amazing athlete. But he hindered the growth of a lot of other athletes who probably would have excelled without him being there. Imagine if we all came together and played to the level that we potentially can, to give to the potential we could potentially give, to serve to the potential we potentially could do. Can you imagine that? What a, how, light, how bright that light would shine. Each time you see a menorah in your home, if you have one, or a near to meet in, in, in our shul here, or you read about the menorah in the Torah, as a congregation, I want you to remember to keep the oil flowing to God's menorah, that the light that is the star in the east and other congregations like it will not be diminished so we don't incur sin before him. Brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord today is this. Let's stir up our first love and zeal that we had in the beginning. Do you remember that? Do you remember that when like, oh my God, oh my God, oh, I didn't, I didn't know this, I didn't know this. And a lot of it you know now. Well, remember those times when you had that zeal and that passion. Return to that, stir that passion up again. <clears throat> Keep your zeal and your love for the Lord fresh. <clears throat> that love for God and for each other so that together we may let our light shine. And together we can serve the God of Israel with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. Impress God with your effort. Impress God with your devotion and commitment. Impress him. Show him what he gifted you, that you are actually applying those gifts and resources with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your might. Please rise. Let's pray. Avinu Shabbat our Father in heaven. My prayer this morning is that what we have shared this morning will find its way deep into our souls and not just stay there, but bear fruit in our lives, and in our congregation. And that your Holy Spirit, your Ruach HaKodesh, may the oil of your Spirit flow, and may we faithfully manage and use the oil that you provide to shine the light that is Torah and Yeshua, repairing the breach, bringing them back together, as a unified people of purpose. In his name we pray. Amen. Yivarech Yahweh Vaishmarech Sadonai Panavalecha Vikanecha Sadonai Panavalecha Vissimlecha Shalom the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
And I pray the Lord to lift his countenance upon you and that he would grant you his shalom. B'Shem Yeshua Adonai. And the congregation agrees? Amen. Amen. Yeshua is the light. And his word is the way. Amen.